So tonight I had the pleasure of playing Last Epoch again. It had been a while since I played Last Epoch. The last time I played it was 0 .9. It, it, it's got to be over a year that I haven't played the game. And, and to be honest with you, I lasted about 100 hours until I kind of lost interest in playing Last Epoch. But now with all the enhancements coming to 1.0 on February 21st, I will be playing Last Epoch 1.0. I'm very excited about it. So in light of that, tonight I went back to Last Epoch and really what I wanted to do was just get back into the game, get a feel and you know, immerse myself back into the game. This way when 1.0 launches on Wednesday, February 21st, I, I kind of am familiar with the UI and I'm not messing around trying to figure stuff out again and that purely was my intent so tonight i streamed last epoch i'm gonna go and show you clips of my stream the stream uh, you know i played about four or five hours and i started off in hardcore i'm like what the hell i love playing hardcore and really i'm not going to be keeping any of these these characters really the point of me playing last epoch tonight was like i said just familiarizing myself again with the game and the ui and etc etc um so i'm gonna go over my experience tonight with last epoch i have to say right off the bat i had a blast playing it it, it was super fun uh, we were having unbelievable debates uh in the with chat and uh, i have to say you you can guess what kind of conversations were going on comparing Last Epoch to other games. I'm not going to mention the other games um, because I really just want to talk about my experience with Last Epoch. And the point of this video uh, is not to convince you to play Last Epoch, but just share my experience coming back to it after being gone for so long and kind of what my first experience back was like. And I do want to highlight what I feel are kind of like necessities for um, action role-playing game to have. And we're going to talk that while I show you like my actual stream footage of me playing Last Epoch. Now, just to give you a little bit of a foundation of what you're going to see, this is basically uh, two playthroughs, very short playthroughs. Like I said, the stream was about five hours. Uh, I selected Hardcore Online and uh, we uh, died twice tonight. Surprise, surprise. Uh, but I, I do want to say it did cement the fact that I'm going to be playing hardcore in Last Epoch. I love that mode of the game. It just adds an element to the game that just you can't replicate in softcore. So I'm definitely going to start off in hardcore on Last Epoch. Uh, but while we watch my gameplay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk through what I feel are like necessities for action role-playing games to have, and then you can take that information for whatever it's worth. So without further ado, let's get into it. So when it comes to what I feel are must-haves for action RPG games, I'm gonna give you five of what I think. What I'm not gonna mention is the lore. Uh, you know, obviously lore is very important when it comes to games. It's not important to some of the players, it is very important to a lot of players. So I'm not gonna highlight lore as it being a must for action role-playing games. And when push comes to shove, we can debate other, either side of that argument. Also, another thing that I'm not gonna highlight on my list of must-haves, and that is the fact of having lots of mobs to kill high-density areas, High density mobs that goes without saying uh, any action RPG game worth its salt should inherently have this so to me that's like a human needing to breathe it's inherent it it needs to exist in order for the game to be an action role-playing game that's why the word action is in the ARPG title um, so I'm not going to mention that either, just because, like I said, it's, it's inherent of the genre. 
Um, so number one, what do I think is a kind of must have for an ARPG to be good? Mm -hmm. That is character customization. And when I say character customization, not just having character customization, but deep customer customization. That is skill trees and builds variety, which offer diverse skill trees that enable players to craft unique builds. Now, when it comes to last epoch, there are five classes and each class has three masteries. This gives you endless opportunities to slice and dice, customize and build whatever play style you are attracted to. So Last Epoch delivers diversity in skills and builds in spades. Uh, they, I have to tell you, tonight going... Now, I had no perceived notions or anything planned. I was going into it blind only with the previous knowledge I had of Last Epoch, which was approximately 100 hours many, many moons ago. Um, and so I didn't go in thinking, okay, I'm going to play a mage. I'm going to, you know, none of that. I just went in blind and I picked uh, two different classes because, like I said, I died twice. And really, while I was building my characters without a build guide, uh, I literally, the, 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 the feeling you get with Last Epoch when it comes to character customization is the endless possibilities and the endless roads, different roads that you can take when it comes to building a character in Last Epoch. There really are endless possibilities. Uh, this game delivers deep character customization in spades, like I said. Um, so to me, one of the main things that a good ARPG must have, and that's deep character customization, where players can distribute points among attributes, customize their skills, their play style. Uh, Last Epoch, I have to say, delivers that in spades. Another thing, and I think this is an obvious one too, and most of you should agree with me, I believe, is a good ARPG should have engaging combat system like fast paced responsive combat mechanic mechanics that keep players on their toes um, and that's enhanced by having skill variety like we spoke about before so having a wide range of skills and abilities that can be mixed and matched to provide ta tactical depth again last epoch delivers this in spades like it really is unbelievable how you can customize not only your character but the combat system and i have to say whether you're playing on a controller or whether you're playing on a mouse and keyboard when you have this character in your hand it really feels it's it's, it's a very engaging combat system i have to say it felt really good it didn't feel clunky it didn't I, I didn't feel like there was a disconnect between what i wanted the character to do and what the character ended up doing like it was very immersive very uh the, the interaction was seamless um i i really and i have to say i really enjoyed the combat system in last epoch it it i think it has a really good engaging combat system um as far as the next one that i feel a good arpg game should have and that's quality of life features clearly when you're dealing with an action rpg game obviously loot plays a big factor we get tons of loot so the interface between our character and the loot is massive in order for an ARPG to be good. So it's got to be also the HUD. It's got to be easy to navigate. The menus are clear. Again, last epoch, you know, it's you got the map and the quests on the right side of the screen. They're very visible. They're very easy to follow, very easy to navigate. Um, the game 
doesn't hold your hand, but it does hold your hand. Like you can, you know where to go. Um, and obviously when you get to the end game, you have more variety in choosing what you want to do. Uh, but when it comes to the quality of life feature, there's a couple of things about last epoch that are very superior when compared to other ARPGs. And that is a couple of things when it comes to quality of life. Number one, efficient inventory management. Last Epoch delivers this in spades. Their inventory management system is really good, really good. Number one, the stash tabs are basically endless. Um, I believe you can have up to 200 tabs, if I'm not mistaken, and please correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. Uh, I believe it's 200. And the stash tabs, you can organize them. You can color code them. You can sort. Um, you earn the additional stash tabs not by buying it with real money, but by using it with in-game currency, which is earned purely by just playing the game. So it provides endless opportunity to manage your loot, which is unbelievable. The inventory system within the character, so the loot that you're carrying around with you while you're grinding, doing the campaign, leveling up, whatever you're picking up, the, the, the UI with your character inventory is also unbelievable. It has a sort items. It has a transfer crafting items it's literally one click and all the crafting items are taken out of your character's inventory and put in to the crafting items and taken out of your inventory space therefore freeing up space in your inventory your character's inventory allowing you to pick up more items also it auto sorts items within your inventory your character's inventory what does that mean? Well, it, when you're picking up loot, it's a mishmash and it's all going. And like Tetris, if you organize it properly, you can maximize the amount of space available to use. So with one click of a button, it's a sort item in your inventory, your character's inventory. It'll Tetris your loot that you're carrying, cram it all together, freeing up space for you to pick up more. Just brilliant features that just make going out and picking up and grinding and getting loot way more easier. You're not going in and up back to the city to dump loot or trash loot. Like it really makes the quality of life feature of inventory management really, really seamless and effortless. It's a really nice feature. And then, wow, the other quality of life feature that is so nice in this game is it has a loot filter. And in reference to the loot filter in Last Epoch, number one, it's not even complicated to create one on your own. Very simple, very straightforward in, in how to create a loot filter for yourself. And it can be as simple or as complicated as you would want. But let's say you're someone that doesn't really want to mess around with that and you'd like to use another one. For example, Path of Exile has the same thing where people create loot filters uh, for general builds, for class-specific builds, and players can copy and paste these builds in Path of Exile. Well, the same feature exists in Last Epoch where you literally can go on any build guide site that has guides, build guides for last epoch. And it literally is control C, control V. That's how quick and easy you can put a loot filter in last epoch. It's brilliant. Um, and so the fact that they have a loot filter, it just enhances the whole managing of loot and what you want to see and what you want to pick up and what you want to highlight, et cetera, et cetera. So when it comes to quality of life, I have to say Last Epoch does a really good job when it comes to those features. Regarding quality of life, that's a perfect segue in loot. Um, it's a perfect segue into what I feel is also important for a good ARPG to have. And that is meaningful loot. And 
a variety of loot. So that could be something as far as item rarity, uh, loot progression. So loot that is tiered and there's rarity levels and loot that encourages exploration, you know, like loot that you can hold on to and make better and craft. And by the way, when it comes to crafting, Last Epoch delivers in spades as well. It's so immersive, the customization, not only of your character, but of the skills, your gear, your weapons. It really, the, the customization and the upgrades available in this game when it comes to these items I just mentioned are just unbelievable. They do a really good job, which really at the end of the day, all we want to do in ARPGs is be able to enhance our player's ability through these mechanisms. So the loot diversity in this game is unbelievable. It's such a wide range that support different play styles and strategies. And it's evident. You, you literally just have to spend 20 minutes in the game and it's just the options that are available to you are just endless. It really is remarkable. They do a really good job with the loot. Loot means something in this game. It's not just a throwaway. There are, there's meaning behind the loot. Um, and if you know what you're doing in Last Epoch, it really can elevate not only the experience, but your character. It, it really is great. Really, really great job on their loot system in this game. And I have to say, uh, I do want to add when 1.0 launch, launches on February 21st, there's a faction uh, mechanism that's coming with 1.0 that's really even going to enhance the loot experience when it comes to uh, Last Epoch. And what do I mean by that? Well, whether or not you know or not, the faction system that's coming in 1.0 in the last epoch is really gonna, uh, like it's remarkable. They're, they're, so people that wanna trade, uh, buy and sell items, you know, that's gonna provide an avenue through the faction system where you can grind to pick up loot, craft high tier loot and then sell and, and benefit from you crafting that gear. Or if you don't have time to grind and you want to buy high-end gear or weapons, you can do that through this faction. But the beauty of this faction system is some players like to play by themselves. And it's referred to as solo self-found in most of the games. And this system, this new faction system, addresses both play styles where players that like to play alone, they like to earn what they wear and the, the gear that they wear, the weapons that they uh, uh, use. There's also a solo self found faction um, addressing the need for those players. And, and, and as you rank up in both these factions, your quality of loot increases, the quantity of loot increases. I'm talking about the solo self found as you rank up, which enhances your loot experience in the game. And when it comes to players that want to use the economy and trade and sell same thing as you rank up you're able to sell in the beginning you can only sell lower tier items and rarity but as you progress and rank up in that faction you're able to sell higher tier and higher rarity like i can go on and on explaining it i actually did a video on it but it really is like groundbreaking what they're doing when it comes to these this faction design um, so this just further 1.0 is further going to enhance the loot system and the meaning of loot in this game. So completely, completely out of the park, unbelievable uh, with Last Epoch and meaningful loot in the game. Now, last but not least is the end game content and replayability. To me, that is very important for an ARPG and Last Epoch, you know, their end game, they know it needs to be enhanced and improved. And I have to say, I'm not 100% sure exactly all the changes that have been made in 1.0 when it comes to the end game, the echoes, the monoliths. I know there's dungeons, etc., etc. 
but I'm going to be very interested to see what improvements have been made in 1.0. However, I will say with a caveat, it's already known and been said by the devs that they know this requires even further enhancing. So it's something that they know needs to be improved. So when it comes to end game content and replayability, Last Epoch definitely has some of that. Now, whether it's an S tier or an A tier quality type of end game in reference to content and replayability, only time will tell. We'll see when 1.0 launches. I can tell you from my own personal experience when it comes to the echoes and the monoliths and all that, that system, I love the fact that you can pick and choose and customize which ones you want to play. So if you're if you're grinding for a specific type of gear, you can play a specific type. You can choose which monolith to do. If you're looking for gear, you can pick that type of monolith. Like they all, all of them have different modifiers. So that all is an interaction between the player and the game as far as which which direction they go and which ones they pick and choose to play in order to get their gear or level up, etc., etc. Now, if it stays, if 1.0 is very similar to 0.9, then I would say they need to really uh, ramp it up a little bit more when it comes to the end game, because that's one of the reasons why I fell off is I just found, although there was variety in the end game, there just wasn't enough. Um, there's definitely more end game than other games in this genre, but I still think it needs further improvement. And 11th Hour themselves have acknowledged that. So it's going to be very interesting to see what 1.0 looks like when it comes to the end game and the content and the replayability. And then if it doesn't hit the mark 100%, how quickly are they going to improve that aspect of the game? Wow. I have to say, so first of all, like I said in my previous segment, I had a blast tonight um, playing Last Epoch. I, I I really got reinvigorated with the game. Uh, so I'm super excited about 1.0 coming on February 21st. I will be playing it. I will be streaming it. Come check me out on YouTube and on Twitch. I stream every evening uh, on both those outlets. So come check me out. I will... Tonight cemented the fact that I will be playing hardcore. I played hardcore tonight, uh, and I just loved. I, I love that mode. It, it just provides. It provides an additional. I don't know what to call it. It just enhances the experience that softcore just can't do. So to start, I'm going to try hardcore. Whether or not we get into softcore, only time will tell. But like, I had a blast. I have to say. I went in tonight with no preconceived notions, no, okay, this is the build I want to do. I, I went in completely blind. Uh, and when I was customizing my characters with the skills and things, it just, again, like I said in my previous segment, the possibilities are endless. It, the, the, the loot filters, inventory management, picking up loot, sorting loot, like, uh, I didn't do any crafting tonight just because I just wanted to enjoy killing stuff and really focus on skills and stuff and see what I could do. So I really didn't get into crafting. That I am super excited for because this game, when it comes to crafting, really the customization available to pl the player base is, is really remarkable, unbelievable. So... I'm looking to further enhance that knowledge, but I had a blast. And at the end of the day, we play video games. Well, at least I do. One of the major components is having fun. And I had fun tonight. And when a game delivers that, what more can you ask for? And and I, I, I want to play it again. So when you st stop playing a game and you want to go back and play it, that's a good sign. And I have that right now. So whether or not that maintains long-term, only time will tell. Anyway, I wanted to share my first experience back with Last Epoch, and that was tonight. I played, like I said, four or five hours. I had a blast. It's a lot of fun. We had unbelievable 
uh, debates in chat. It was it was a really fun night. So the the community is awesome. The eleventh hour looks like a really really um, honest and transparent uh, developer. So I'm really excited to see what they do, and I'm wishing them well. I wish all the games well because at the end of the day, I want to see all the games do well because that gives me more options in content and what I stream and what I have fun with because I love playing video games. I love talking about video games. So at the end of the day, I want to see all the games in this genre because it's one of the genres that I love. I want to see them all succeed. Um, and, and that really is as simple as that. So that was my experience, guys. I hope you found the video informative. And if you can like, comment, and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Helps my channel grow and get my content out in the YouTube universe. And thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And as always, we'll hope to see you next time. Take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.